One was a relationship galvanized during the COVID-19 pandemic, the other was forged through a close working relationship over many years in government. Appointing Mr. Gon, Kim Jong and Mr. Heng, Sui Kit as his two deputy prime ministers in his first cabinet. Singapore's next prime minister, Mr. Lawrence Wong, described his chosen lieutenants as steady hands whose advice and counsel he valued. I've known both Kim Jong and Sui Kit for many years, said Deputy Prime Minister Wong, 51, at a press conference on May 13. For me, during this initial period of transition, it will be useful to have two more experienced ministers as my deputies. It was Mr. Gon, who retains his position as Minister for Trade and Industry, who picked Mr. Wong as co-chair of the Multi-Ministry Task Force on COVID-19 to direct the whole-of-government response to the coronavirus outbreak. Mr. Wong said Mr. Gon, 65, was a pillar of strength throughout, and they got to know each other's working styles better. We went through the COVID baptism of fire together. Mr. Gon's experience in international economics will also help Singapore navigate a more contested global environment. Mr. Wong added. As for Mr. Hung, 63, who is already Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Wong said they entered politics together in 2011 and worked closely while at the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Finance. They also worked on national exercises, such as our Singapore Conversation Initiative in 2012, which Mr. Hang led. Mr. Gong said he first started working with Mr. Wong as MPs in neighbouring wards. He's in Marsiling UT and I'm in Chua Chu Kong GRC. We are adjacent to one another. We did many things together, many local projects together, to benefit our residents. As cabinet colleagues and co-chairs of the COVID-19 task force, Mr. Gon recognized Mr. Wong's strong leadership, particularly in the midst of crisis, he said. Mr. Hang said he particularly appreciated Mr. Wong's support during the pandemic. Especially in 2020, when the finance ministry rolled out five government budgets in a year. Mr. Hang added that he and Mr. Gon also had a close working relationship when Mr. Gon was health minister and he was finance minister. Noting how they rolled out the $9 billion Pioneer Generation Package and the subsequent $8 billion Medica Generation Package together. I'm very happy that Lawrence has appointed Kim Jong as the other Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Hang said. He said he was also delighted that Mr. Wong had been selected to succeed Prime Minister Li Xinlong. Mr. Hung, who stepped aside as leader of the People's Action Party's fourth-generation team in 2021, added, I think it's very important for us to have a smooth transition. If you look around the world, this is not common. Beyond the economy, Mr. Hang noted that Mr. Wong Mr. Gon and himself have also worked closely on tackling social issues. There's a lot of work that we will need to do, and both Kim Jong and I will give our support to our incoming Prime Minister Lawrence to bring Singapore together to work on these various critical issues facing the country. He said. With the latest cabinet changes, Mr. Hang will no longer be coordinating Minister for Economic Policies. There will also be no coordinating minister for social policies. A role previously held by President Thaman Shanmugaram, who resigned in July 2023 to run for head of state. Neither will there be a coordinating minister for infrastructure. Introduced in 2015, the only person to hold that post was Mr. Corbun Wand, who retired from politics in 2020. Senior Minister Teo Chi Hing will continue in his role as Coordinating Minister for National Security in the new cabinet. Asked about this, Mr. Wong said Mr. Teo's role is a standing arrangement and the national security portfolio is a critical 
heavy responsibility. We have these standing mechanisms and processes where agencies do come together to coordinate and make sure we operate effectively. And there, you need a coordinating minister to oversee these standing processes. However, when it comes to the economy, infrastructure and social policies, Mr. Wong said these areas are becoming more intertwined. Whenever you deal with economic issues, you have to think about infrastructure. You also have to think about social impact, he pointed out. Coordinating mechanisms within the government have also improved considerably. Hence there is no need for a coordinating minister in these three areas for now, Mr Wong said. Of course, down the road, circumstances may change, new needs may evolve, and we will consider those in due course accordingly. He added. But for now, between myself and the two DPMs, we will effectively coordinate our policies and work very closely with the relevant ministers as a team.